Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on the modes of radio wave propagation. This will be the part two series discussion. The part one series discussion, I have concentrated on the surface wave. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on the sky wave. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. This diagram, I have shown it to you on a part one series discussion on the modes of radio wave propagation. In the part one series, I'm actually concentrate on this surface wave. For this part two series, I'm going to concentrate on the sky wave. So from here, you can see that the electromagnetic wave actually aim towards the sky. And with the help of ionosphere, they basically reflect the back and finally, this electromagnetic wave actually received by the receiving antenna at the Earth. So this is the discussion that we are going to concentrate, the sky wave. The sky wave is the most frequently used method for long distance transmission. Okay, so from this diagram here, you can see that this is a base station. For example, it can also reach a ship which is way, way, kilometer away from the transmitting antenna. So from this diagram here, you can see that the electromagnetic wave actually shoot towards the sky. And basically with the ionosphere, they basically reflect the back and finally this wave actually reach down to the receiving antenna. Sky wave are radiated in a direction towards the sky at a relative large angle with reference to the earth. So this is the Earth. Basically, the sky wave actually been at an angle very large towards the sky to reach the ionosphere before it finally reflected back to the Earth. So this is what it means here. So this is the definition of the sky wave propagation. Sky waves are affected by changing condition in the ionosphere and it depends on the ionosphere to reflect the signal back to the Earth. So from here, you can see that they actually depend largely on this ionosphere whether the signal will be able to reflect back to the Earth or not. The sky wave propagation depends on all these parameters. For example, the time of the day, the location of transmitter and receiver, the sunspot activity. Okay, when sunspot activity are low, frequency above 20 MHz are unusable because the E and F layer are too weakly ionized to reflect signal back to the Earth. Okay, so don't worry so much about the E and the F layer. I'm going to have a quick discussion on the next slide. Sudden ionosphere disturbance due to solar flare cause most HF high frequency signal to be absorbed at the D layer. The sky wave typically are used for HF high frequency communication. Okay, this diagram here show the ionosphere that is typically divided into four distinct re regions. Okay, the D layer, okay, which is the nearest to the Earth, the E layer, the F1 and F2 layer. Okay, typically the range is from 48 km all the way up to 400 km. This layer vary in location and in ionized level with the time of the day. Okay, they also fluctuated in a clinical method of patterns throughout the years. The ionosphere reflect radio wave of specific frequency, okay, typically the HF high frequency from 3 to 30 megahertz. So this frequency range typically will use this sky wave for communication. It is this reflection of radio energy that make worldwide HF radio communication possible without the aid of satellite. Each layer represents an increase in ion density on the one below it. It thus the lowest layer 
the D layer is the weakest and disappeared at night. Okay, so at night, this D layer actually disappeared. Okay, so with the help of E, F1, and F2, they basically reflect back from the Earth, finally to the ionosphere, and finally come back to the Earth. Okay, let's take a close look on this in order to understand this. This is what we have learned in our secondary school day. This is what we call the Snell law, something like that. So you can see from here, because of the different density, you can see that this wave actually bend. So this is the definition here. The bending of the radio wave at its move from one medium into another medium due to the radio wave traveling with a different velocity of propagation in different medium. In short, because of the different medium, okay, the speed of propagation actually changed. And because of this, the radio wave actually bend. Okay, let's take a look on this in order to understand better. So this is medium one, this is medium two. From here you can see that this part here, they actually travel faster. And hence, because they actually travel faster, they can actually cover a greater distance. Can you see here, they basically cover a greater distance. For this part here, they traveling slower. And because the speed is slower, hence lesser distance actually travel. And because of this, the waveform actually bend. Can you see from here? So this is the meaning of this. And later on, you will see that because of this property, okay, the waveform actually can bend and finally come back to the Earth. Okay, so this is the definition of this reflection. I have prepared these slides in order to let you understand how does a sky wave propagation actually occur. Okay, so these are all the different ionosphere environment with different density. You can see that this is N1, N2, N3, and N4. Okay, remember what I have mentioned on the previous slide. Okay, because of the different density, the wave actually bend. Can you see over here? The wave actually bend and bend again. And again, they bend again. And finally, they actually bend and finally come back to the Earth. So therefore, this is a transmitter. This is a receiver. Can you imagine that they basically travel straight? After that, when they actually reach the ionosphere they start to bend as is shown over here and finally they actually bend and come back to the earth so therefore this earth station can actually transmit a signal back to the receiver which is also on the earth okay so this is what we call a sky wave propagation let's come to the advantage and disadvantages of sky wave high frequency transmission offer the advantage of long distance communication and has a higher survival rate in harsh environment. Okay, so this is the advantage of high frequency transmission. They basically provide a higher survival rate, which means that the chances to receive a high frequency is much more higher in a harsh environment. The use of suitable high frequency radio solves the communication problem in thick jungle mountainous terrain and in environment where line of sight transmission are often not possible. Let's come to the disadvantage of SkyWave. Satellite communication are actually very vulnerable to physical destruction and electronic countermeasure attack during the war. So this SkyWave propagation is actually very prompt. For example, if I want to do an electronic countermeasure attack during the war, I can actually cause a very strong interference into this form of communication. The quality and reliability of high frequency radio wave propagation is depend on frequency, time of the day, season, and also the degree of ionosphere disturbance. In another word, one frequency that may be propagated well during certain period of the day or night, but may be poor or cannot be used during another periods of the day or night. Here with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support.